Um, the government has been stressing that we, Australia as a country, makes our own independent and robust decisions in foreign policy. But in the last few years, um, I'm seeing that the government's strategy seems to be on the same footing as the United States, um, such as you know, allowing American troops to station in our country, um, banning Huawei from participating in any telecommunication market in the country, and failing, even failing to condemn um, President Donald Trump being rude to our then Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. Um, not, not to mention that um, the government has been knee-jerkingly calling for a in independent inquiry for COVID-19 without consulting, um, obviously, China. So how do we expect China to see us as having an independent, flexible foreign policy when our actions were evidently heavily, heavily favouring the United States? Lavina Lee. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> um, great question. Um, look, I think that some of, some of the things that you've mentioned, um, things like banning Huawei from our 5G network, calling for an independent inquiry into uh, the origins of COVID-19, uh, all of those decisions, I'd, I'd add as well, uh, calling out uh, China's activities in the South China Sea as being against international law under the, the law of the Sea Convention. Um, all of those things are not things that America asked us to do or directed us to do. And in fact, Australia came out ahead of other countries. So I think um, I would stress that Australia, in making these kinds of decisions, is actually making them on our own, our own foreign policy based on our national interest. So I think, in a sense, I'm kind of rejecting the premise of the question. But, but there is a, a perception yeah. um, in the Chinese government, it seems, that we are doing the bidding of America, that we're this sort of lapdog that runs out and says there needs to be an independent inquiry because it might please our allies in America. Do you acknowledge that that perception at least exists? Um, look, sure, it, it's probably a convenient way to characterise us as, uh, as a lapdog, lapdog of the United States. Um, but I, I would still say, when, when you look at the, the 14 grievances that the Chinese embassy uh, released, um, those grievances are all sovereign decisions that a, a government can and should be able to make without uh, any interference from another country. Um, and I would see those 14 grievances as basically demands on Australia to outsource our foreign policy to China. And we, we're a democratic country. Um, I think every government should have the right to make an independent foreign policy. Um, and I, I can't see how um, any government uh, could accept another foreign country telling us um, that we shouldn't have in foreign interference legislation. Um, I, don't, I don't see that as being something that is acceptable, that any other country would actually backtrack on. So when I look at those 14 grievances, um, there, is, there aren't any, any one of those that I think the, an Australian government could legitimately backtrack on without, at the same time, um, outsourcing our foreign policy to China. Michael Yabsley, the news today has been all about the social media post of a, of a Chinese government official, this image of an Australian soldier uh, holding a, a small Afghan child on top of an Afghan flag uh, with a knife at their throat. It's a pretty disturbing, uh, digitally manufactured image. I mean, is this a low point, do you think, in the Australia-China relationship? Hamish, let's, let's call this for what it is. I mean, there is a, there's, a, there's a bully in the school and the bully's name is China. Now, this, is, this has been, of course, in a state of decline, not overnight, but over, over, the, last, over the last few years. I would certainly align myself uh, with what Lavina has said. Um, I, I too would, with, with respect, reject the premise of the, of the question. Um, you know, when you, when you look at what China has done in the South China Sea, all, almost to, to reinvent the geography of that, of that key shipping area, what China has done in relation to the various Pacific islands, Samoa, uh, the Solomons, 
Um, it's recently opened a, 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 a an embassy in Kiribati. Now, th these are not these are not. But these are, these are, this is not necessarily evidence of bullying, is it? We, we, well, Opening I, an I embassy think so. in Kiribati. I, 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 think, I think it is absolutely evidence of of China going all out to flex its flex its very significant muscles and put in place stepping stones in relation to what might just ultimately be a new world order. If, if I can, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just make this point. I, mean, I, I have believed for a long time that, without putting too fine a point on it, uh, the Chinese believe that we are bits of dopes. And if you, if you take one particular uh, decision that was taken by Australia to lease the port of Darwin to China for $500 million through a 99-year lease, we, we as Australians would not be allowed to buy a bedsit in China. But China can come here, weigh $500 million around and get a 99-year lease over that incredibly important but Is that strategic... their fault or ours? That well, that, 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 that's what I'm that saying. And, and I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm saying when China says we're dopes, I think mm. they've got a point. And I think we... I, I think... I think I think we have I think we have learnt the hard way uh, the nature of what we are dealing with with China. Jimmy, is it what we are saying or the way Australia is is saying it? I, I think I think it has to be you know like for a start I mean China is is doing what. what the Americans did, what the British Empire did. What, empires get strong. Whoever's financially doing that well, they, they, they grow and they try to, you know, take over the, the world. This is the nature of things. I think to fight it, you can't do it by, by being arrogant back. I think there has to be some sort of, you know, you know we have to talk as, as a groups as opposed to, you know, Australia standing up to China is not going to do anything. But if, if the rest of the world, and we talk and we, and we reason, you know, with people, I mean, it's a very complicated, you know. Levine knows much more about that. Sure. You're, you're nodding. Do you think we're being aggressive or that we're being arrogant? Uh, I think Joey's got a point in that the perception definitely is that Australia's doing somebody else's bidding. And where we but sit... But do you in... think we are? No, I don't think we are, but that is the perception. Uh, where we sit in the world is obviously in the middle of Asia and we have to be cognisant of where we are. I mean, every agricultural pursuit you can think of exists in the electorate of Ida Monero. I've got uh, vineyards who export 20% of their wine to China. That's n not... That's going to have a significant impact on their business. And now I've got a bunch of other agricultural pursuits wondering when they're going to be hit next. What needs to happen is, yes, there is going to be tough discussions, but we actually have to have the discussions. You know, if we're serious about trying to protect small business, if we're serious about trying to protect our agricultural interests, then get on a plane, go to China and sit down and have a frank conversation. I mean, isn't that what diplomacy is all about? Is that realistic, Lavina, at this point? Um, it would be a nice thing, but China's apparently not taking the calls of our foreign minister or defence minister or our prime minister. So you've got to ask the question, is it our problem or is it China's problem? Um, I, I, unfortunately, um, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for all of our small businesses and our exporters. I mean, China's bullying behaviour, I think, is really being exposed. I, I would think uh, what happened today, that picture um, of the soldier, is probably... Uh, it's an unspeakable type of act and I think it's a real low in our relationship but it says more about China than it says about us um, and I think uh, what has been exposed is that any any business that does uh, export to China the political and the sovereign risks of doing that are now completely exposed so we honestly... So, so the farmers in the, farmers, the uh, lecture just have to find different customers? Is that it, the answer? I guess it's, it's about... that's the hard part because for so long we've had governments say China's our big trade partner, everybody gear up. We had Oz industry experts talk about going out to farms, talking about how you market your product in China uh, and right now there is no assistance, no help. Sorry, diversify your markets. Um, so, you know, there are a bunch of businesses at the moment sitting there, um, piggy in the middle, wondering what's going on. And it's just, you know, you head back to the, the same discussion on bushfires. It's the people 
who are actually impacted the most that are having the least say in all of this, and that is disgraceful. Hey, Hamish, if I if I may just say, I mean the, the other the other point that just can't be lost in this is that so much of the aggressive behaviour from China goes back to the point where Australia had the hide and audacity to call for an independent inquiry in relation to COVID. They didn't like it and the heat has been turned up markedly Maybe it was the way we happened. did it. Maybe it was the way we did it. I, I think they re certainly reacted badly to it, but I think, uh, you know, we can't just expect, you know, if, if we're Australians and we say, this is wrong, we've got to bloody stand up to it, that might not culturally not, might not be the same way to speak to the Chinese. You know, there's, there has to be diplomacy, like you said. And I think, you know, we, we can sit and talk about how bad China is, but we had, we had, we had high commissioners in, in Kiribati, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>